don't know about you, but fall is my absolute favorite time of year. The colors and the fun activities that go along with fall, fall festivals, it's just my favorite. So considering that, fall and Halloween are my absolute favorite seasons to DIY for. In today's video, I'm gonna make some fall and Halloween decor that I hope that you guys love just as much as I do. So if you're as excited as I am for some fall DIYs, let's go ahead and get started. I picked up this ring form, I guess we're gonna call it, from Dollar Tree along with this wooden round from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to start by filling in those holes on the wood round where the hanger was. I don't want those holes to be there. And honestly, they probably would have been covered up anyways by the form that we're gonna glue to it. But either way, I just filled it in with some wood filler let that dry and sanded it down. Then I went ahead and painted it with my Waverly chalk paint and plaster and gave it one rough coat of paint. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am not super great when it comes to free handing with drawing or painting, but I decided today that I wanted to try it out. So I am going to paint some pumpkins and I will say it looks worse before it looks better. So keep that in mind as I'm going through and painting. So all you're going to do is paint yourself some pumpkins. If you don't know how, you can try to follow as best as I did uh, on this, you know, sign. Or I'm sure there's lots of other tutorials on how to paint pumpkins. I just went in with my main pumpkin color, which was rust from Chocotour, added a little bit of water to it, and then kind of drew out my pumpkin. I took some brown paint and made those lines for the ridges of the pumpkin. Then I took some white and went over those lines and then went back over it with the orange and I just kind of blended back and forth between all three of those colors until I had it looking the way that I wanted it to look. So keep in mind as you're doing this, if you're not an artist, if you feel like your free hand is not the best, just keep going back and forth, blending between all of your colors, and I promise you, it'll turn out pretty decent. I look at the end result of this, I'm like, that looks pretty good. So just keep that in mind as you are drawing your pumpkins. So I did that first pumpkin in orange, and then I took the sea glass color from Dixie Bell, and I painted a second pumpkin. So I'm just kind of following that same routine. I tried my best to kind of draw it out with a pencil beforehand, but it didn't really work out the way that I had drew it anyways. So I just took that paint and I like to do all the blending when the paint is still wet. So I didn't really wait for any of my layers to dry. I just went back and forth between each layer as the paint was wet. So I started with the blue, I did some white, and then I'll go in with the brown and just kind of make those ridges, make those outlines, and try to give more detail to my pumpkin. I also liked adding the brown to the outside of the pumpkin to kind of give a bit more detail with you know the outside of each pumpkin uh, to make it their own so that each pumpkin wasn't meshing into the next one that was next to it. So that's really all I did. I painted in my stems. So I did this one in the blue and then I also did another white pumpkin. I won't have you sit through and watch that one just because you know, I basically did the exact same thing, but with a white pumpkin and I did the white and a little bit of brown mixed in with the white and then just the, you know, straight brown. So that's all I did to make these pumpkins. It was fairly easy, but I did play around with them quite a bit, painting back and forth, meshing colors together until I got it the way that I wanted it to look. Now I wanted to add some more kind of fall florally pieces to the sign. So I started by drawing some sticks just with a really tiny paintbrush and some brown paint. And then it's kind of hard to see right here, but I did draw little white leaves on each of the sticks kind of sparsely. I didn't do anything too full. And I just took the edge of the paintbrush and made kind of little slashy marks. They weren't, you know, big full petals, 
but more like little tiny blooms. And I just went along each of the little sticks that I drew, adding those little blooms on there. And then I also wanted to draw some cotton. So I drew my stick and then I did two little white circles for the cotton that were right next to each other, added the brown pieces at the bottom, and then kind of did some detail work along the cotton so that it would be a little bit more defined. And like I said, it's a bit hard to tell right here just because the camera doesn't like to pick it up very well, but you'll see at the end what it looks like. Uh, these were really easy to draw too, but like I said, I am nowhere near a very good artist. So I feel like if I can draw these things, <laughs> then you can draw them as well. I added some orange little details on the sticks just by taking my the back of my paintbrush and adding little dots. And then I wanted to draw a almost like wheat type piece on here so I took some yellow and a skinny paintbrush and just went back and forth kind of with little slashy marks all the way down on the sign and then I did add some brown in the middle to give it a bit more definition. Now I wanted a little bit more of some color popping through, so I did add some leaves with some orange leaves on them, or I guess a branch with orange leaves, I think. <laughs> I just drew myself a little branch and then took a rounded tipped paintbrush and drew these little leaves on each of those branches. Now grab yourself the word welcome as a cutout. You can find these so many different places, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, uh, even sometimes Dollar Tree. This one specifically is off of my website that is available to purchase if you want to grab that one. And then for our ring, I painted that black front and the sides. I didn't worry about the back. And I'm going to glue that ring to the front of the sign that we just made. I just put the round right on top and then I wanted to make sure this was going to be really sturdy. So I took my staple gun and went around and stapled the round to the ring. Lastly, you're going to glue your word welcome to the very front and that's all you have to do. If you wanted to make this a door hanger, you could add a hanger on the back or some twine on the back to hang it up. But I think this is so cute. You guys, I'm so proud of myself for this DIY and painting it all by hand. I think it turned out really, really pretty. I love all the colors. Let me know, can you paint by hand? And if you can't, are you gonna give this DIY a shot? Only a couple more days to snag the July craft club kits on my website. If you didn't know, I have a monthly subscription box and this month is fall themed. Some of my favorite pieces that we've done. I think you guys are going to have so much fun with them. So if you're not signed up for our craft club, head over to my website, moradecalandecor.com to snag the July kits. After July is over, these will no longer be available. So if you want them, grab them while you can. I'm going to grab the black arch that I purchased from Chocotour, as well as two different transfers that we are going to use in today's DIY. First, I wanted to paint my arch. So these are essentially tombstones. Obviously, you can use them for whatever you want. I'm going to use them for tombstones. So I started by painting the entire thing white. And keep in mind what I'm doing on the front is what I'm also going to be doing on the back because I'm going to make this a two-sided sign. So starting with white, painting the entire thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I used a bunch of different colors on this. I believe that this is Dune from Chocotour. I added little slashies everywhere and then tried to blend those in as best as I could. And then as I was doing this, I thought sponges would work so much better. So I grabbed the colors Rust from Chocotour, the color Camel, and then I also went in with a black. So what I'm doing is taking that sponge and I'm just starting to dab everywhere on my piece. I wanted this tombstone to look old, to look weathered, to just look really dingy and dirty. So I'm taking that sponge and just dabbing these colors basically everywhere. 
I did grab a bigger sponge that had no paint on it and I did up and down dabbing motions over the entire thing to give it that texture from the sponge. I didn't want my piece to look streaky from when I brushed it with paint. I wanted it to look like it had a certain texture to it. So that's why I went over it with the sponge. And then I just started going back and forth between all three of these colors and just did dabbing. I would dab on the paint and then using my sponge that didn't have any paint, I'd go back over it to kind of blend it all in. And I dabbed black everywhere. And then again, took the other sponge and just started dabbing and blending everything in, everything together. There really isn't a proper technique to this. Just have fun, make it the way that you want to make it, and just keep dabbing away until you get your piece the way that you want it to look. Once I have it the way I want it, I am going to use my Chalk Tour Surface Wax on it to protect the paint from peeling when I bring the transfer on top of it. You don't have to wax it, especially because it's a Chalk Tour piece, but I want that paint to be protected, and so that is why I waxed both the front and the back. Now I'm going to go in with two different transfers. One says game over. And then the other one that you'll see here in a minute says, I am a tombstone. You, I told you I was sick <laughs> at the bottom. I think it's really fun. And then it also has these skeleton hands on the sides, which I think looks super cool on this piece. So I am just going to lay my transfer out and then I'm going to use my velvet black chalk paste to go over the entire thing. Now, if you're anything like me and you are a slower chalker, a trick that you can do is to pull up your transfer as you're chalking. That's what I like to do. You don't want to let the paste dry on your transfer. You want it to peel, you want to peel up while the paint is still wet so that the paint isn't drying to your transfer. So as I'm going, I'm kind of pulling that transfer up so that anything that I laid down a while ago is getting pulled up and not drying to my transfer. And I just keep doing that as I'm chalking. And there you have the front side, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the back, just using the Game Over Tombstone. And I'm going to pull that transfer up as I'm still chalking away at the bottom. You're gonna pull that up, wash your transfers so you can use them again just with some warm water. And there you have it. This is what this DIY looks like. I think this looks like so much fun. I love it. I Like I said, I love Halloween, I love fall, and this is just getting me so excited for the season, for all the things, for all the haunted houses we do every single year. I'm so excited. So this is one of my favorites. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you guys are new to my channel, my name's Liz, and recently we just hit 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. And because I couldn't do that without all of you, I am doing a 100K giveaway here on my channel. All you have to do is comment down below when you found me, when you started watching, and how long you have been part of our little crafty family here on YouTube. I'm gonna pick one person to win a whole bunch of crafting goodies as a thank you for being a part of this really awesome community that I built here on YouTube. So comment down below when you started watching, when you became a part of our crafting family on YouTube. I'll have the giveaway open for one week. All the details will be in the description box below. Now let's go ahead and jump into our next DIY. For this DIY, I grabbed a piece of wood from my garage. This was cut out from our laser and I want to say it's about 11 and a half by 20 something. I can't remember the exact dimensions, but if you wanted to recreate this and you didn't have a little piece of wood like this, you could also pick up a one by 12 at the Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever it is that you shop and just cut it down to the sides that you want it and that will work perfectly. So I just started by painting with a coat of Waverly chalk paint and plaster and I didn't 
care to get all the sides or anything like that. Having that natural wood poke through was just fine. And then I'm grabbing the cutouts to coordinate with the transfer that we're going to use. You can find these cutouts on my website, moredecalandecor.com. And I specifically made these to coordinate with some chalk tour transfers. So I'm just painting all of those white. I'm going to take my surface wax from chalk tour and I am going to run this along everywhere that I am going to have a chalk tour transfer laid down. So I do it on my sign and then I also do it on my words. Now the transfer isn't going to cover the whole sign so I didn't wax the entire sign. For my words I just use my fingers to apply the wax to the pieces. Now I don't know if I would recommend this because I don't feel like I put enough wax on there. You'll see in a minute what I'm referring to but just get wax on your pieces so that it prevents bleeding. I'm going to use black for all of the words except for for those cursive words since those are the words that we cut out. So I just go over the rest of the words that I'm doing with my black chalk paste. I'll pull those up and then I will lay my transfer down on top of each of those cutouts. So I just took the cutout, placed it behind the word, centered it as best as I could, and then I am going to chalk over these in the color Saffron from Chocotor. It's this really pretty fall yellow. I love a good, you know, dirty yellow, kind of more browny yellow. Those are my favorite, especially for fall. So I'm going to go over all of those words and peel them up. Now, I did have a bit of bleeding on here, probably a combination of pushing too hard and then not getting enough wax on there. So all I'm going to do to clean it up is take my white paint and a small paintbrush, and I'm going to go over all of the bleeds that happen on my piece. So even I don't get it perfect every single time. So if you're ever frustrated that you have bleeding, just know it happens to us all. I laid out my pieces where they needed to be glued and I'm going to glue each of them down. I just use this wood glue super glue that you can get from the Dollar Tree and that works perfectly. So once everything is glued down, I can move on to the next step of this project. I am going to make some more pumpkins on this sign. I loved the way that the first project when I painted the pumpkins turned out, so I wanted to paint some more. So again, I am just really roughly drawing these pumpkins. I do kind of a couple different humps and then add in all the detailed lines for the ridges of the pumpkin using some brown paint. And I'm gonna go back and forth between the brown, some white, and the orange until I get it the way that I want it to look. I'm also going to repeat this step with a more blue pumpkin and then a yellow pumpkin as well. So I'm just going to kind of let you watch the process because sometimes watching how I do it is easier to understand than me telling you how I did it. And then just now I did the exact same thing with my other two pumpkins. Next, I started adding little sticks and branches for some more florally pieces on my sign, doing the same technique that I did before with the branches and the little white leaves. I also drew a little cotton ball on there with a little stem. Again, the same process that I did before on the other project. I wanted some more of those fall colors in there, so I did some more orange leaves on those branches and then I felt like the top needed something as well so I drew a longer branch with some sticks on there or little you know branches on the branch and then I did more of a kind of white brown leaf color to it tried to make it not super white I just mixed a teeny bit of brown in there and then with a rounded paintbrush I made the leaves on each branch. 
I also did little orange dots along the branch to make it look like there were little orange berries on each of those branches. And that's all you gotta do for this DIY. I love this one. Dare to say this one might be my favorite out of all of the DIYs today. I just think it turned out so cute. I love the colors. I love the words on the side. I definitely think I'm going to make a t-shirt using this transfer for fall just with some black paste because I think this would look really cute as a graphic tee. For this DIY, I am going to do the Chocotor Trick or Treat Thorns kit. I thought this kit was so cute, and like I said before, I'm really excited for Halloween, so I wanted to get this one all ready and all prepared for me to hang up during Halloween time or display during Halloween time. So this kit comes with everything that you need to DIY it. You are gonna get all the supplies plus the transfer, you're gonna get the chalk paste plus a squeegee, all the thumbtacks and hanging materials. One thing that I did add was a wood round to the back because this is cork board and I wasn't sure if I wanted to hang it up or have it sit somewhere. I wanted it to be a little bit more sturdy in case I decided to just have it sit somewhere. So I added a wood round to the back just to give it some support in case I didn't want to hang it up. Now this kit comes with your bats your paste, like I said, all the things that you need. I took that transfer and I placed it in the middle as best as I could. Now your kit comes with the glow in the dark paste plus the black paste. I already had those in my paste jars, so I didn't want to open up the paste packets so that I can use those for giveaways and things like that. So I set those to the side, opened my paste jars and use the chalk paste in velvet black on the entire transfer. So I just went over the whole thing, scraped up as much extra paste as I could, lifted it up, and voila, you have a really cute design on your cork board. Now I'm going to take all those bat transfers, lay them onto the coordinating bats, and then went over them with the glow in the dark paste. So the fun thing is this dries clear. You can still see an outline of it, but it doesn't have a color to it. And then at night, it will glow in the dark, which I think is really fun. So I did that on all four of my bats. Now I'm gonna add the little sticky pieces that come with the kit on the back of each of my bats. And then you're gonna take the thumbtacks that come with your kit, and you can place those thumbtacks on top of the sticky part on your bats. And now you can stick your bats into your cork board, which I think is so much fun. You could also do other things, make other things to stick into your cork board. You could grab stuff from the Dollar Tree and add thumbtacks to the back of it, add it to your cork board, especially like their DIY ornaments. I think those would be really fun if you can find some Halloween ones. So I just stuck these in and that is it for this one. This was really, really easy to make. And I think this is going to be so cute sitting out for Halloween, especially if you like the non-traditional Halloween stuff, more of kind of, you know, a neutral Halloween without the purples and, you know, all those bright colors. That's how I like decorating for Halloween. So I think this will work perfectly. That's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed all of today's projects. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comments down below. And let me know, are you ready for fall? Are you ready for Halloween DIYs? I just, I couldn't help it. I can't wait. I'm so excited for fall. Like I said, it's my favorite time of year. So I hope that these inspired you to create some fall decor. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to subscribe down below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it and I will see you in my next one. Bye.